Hope you are all in great spirits. Welcome to this session of TSAT. Today, we shall be discussing a few topics on English vocabulary. Now, at the outset, what is vocabulary? Vocabulary is nothing but the body of words used in a particular language. That means to say, vocabulary is the stock of words in a particular language. English vocabulary is so dynamic that as many new words are regularly added to the already existing stock. To specify the significance of vocabulary, I quote David Wilkins. David Wilkins says, while without grammar, very little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. With gra without, without grammar, at least um, uh, whatever we wish to convey can be conveyed. But without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. So, friends, here to begin with, I shall now give you an idea about the topics that we are going to deal with and uh, what we are going to discuss and what would be the modus operandi of the program. The topics for discussion are Number one, root words. We are going to discuss what are root words, examples of root words. And finally, we also have a task on root words. Number two, we are going to deal with prefixes. And number three, we are going to deal with suffixes. Number four, we are going to deal with what are homophones, homonyms and homographs. These are uh, very important components of vocabulary that we shall discuss in the program, in this program. Now, I uh, request uh, my, my dear friend, Mr. Rajneesh, to take over and uh, start the topic related to root words. Hello, hello, Mr. Krishna. Nice that, uh, nice that uh, you have start, started the discussion with a quotation of uh, David Wilkins. Uh, David Wilkins said, uh, without words, nothing can be conveyed. What are these words and how are these words formed? The, well, usually, in English, uh, words are formed in several ways. For example, um, back formation, compounding, and from derivation, and neologisms. There are so many kinds of uh, formation of words. We, we, dis, uh, we start the discussion with the knowing what is a word basically first. So, a word, a new word generally specifically speaking is a formed of a root and also an affix. A root is the basic form of a word and affix is something which is added to this stem, word root or stem and affixes once again are uh, prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes are the parts of words or uh, syllables which are added before before the beginning of the word. And if uh, a, uh, um, so a syllable is added after the word or stem, that is called a suffix. And mind you, my dear friends, affixes can only appear attached to a root. They cannot uh, um, act independently. They do not have any meaning in isolation. We shall see, for example, you take the word happiness. Happiness, what is the root word in this? Happy. Happy is the root word and the affix is ness. And if we remove that ness and uh, add un, which is a prefix, it becomes unhappy. And uh, if you add ness, that becomes happiness, that is a suffix. These are root words and we shall see some more root words as examples. Yes, if you say, look at these words, lovely, lovely in the word lovely, love is the root word and li is a suffix and economic, economy and economic, ik is the suffix and unimportant, important is the root word and un is a prefix, dislike, dis is a prefix and like is a, the root word, right. And uh, one, one more word we shall see, thermal, if we take a word thermal, thermal 
is uh, derived from Greek. It's, uh, it's of Greek origin. In Greek, therm means heat. So, whatever is related to heat is thermal. We can say thermal. And uh, with this, we can de derive so many other words like thermometer, thermodynamic, thermostat, so on and so forth. And look at this word, automatic. Automatic, once again, this is a Greek word. And in this word, you have two roots, two stem words. You see auto and matic. Both are, auto means a self and matos is acting and which functions on its own is uh, automatic. Similarly, we can see these words like automobile, autobiography, autoplay, auto start, so on and so forth. These, the, the, see, we look at uh, some other commonly used words, bicycle, by is two, and cycle is wheels. Bicycle is a vehicle which has uh, two wheels. If a vehicle has three, three wheels, it is a tricycle. And the vehicle is driven by a motor, that is a motorcycle we all know. And cardiology, in Greek cardia means heart, logos or logia, we all know that it is a study. Cardiology is the study of heart. And one who is a specialist in cardiology is cardiologist. And the graph or report of how heart functions is a, cardio, is a car, cardiograph. That is what you have in ECG, electrocardiograph. And the last one, hydrophobia. Hydro, what does it mean? Hydro is water, related to water. Once again, a Greek origin. Phobia is fear. Um, if we use this hydro, you, we can form another some more uh, words like hydroelectricity, dehydration, so on and so forth. And you see, my friends, after every topic, now as uh, we have uh, finished the, the one on root words, we have an exercise like thing. We will give you a task of some, some questions, three or four questions. You have to answer. You keep your pen and paper ready and uh, you can verify your answers with the answers we give at the end of the session. Here, here comes the task. Task 1, this is related to root words. We have given, we have, uh, given three root words here and you have to write two more, two, you have to add two more words basing this root word. Uh, we have given one word each as an example. See, tele, telephone, and you have to write the other two words. Geo, geography. Herb, herb is uh, something related to plants, herbarium, like this. And now we shall see what are affixes. Shall we start uh, with the affixes, Mr. Krishna? Yes, Mr. Rajneesh. I think it will be better if we start with the brief prefixes. What are prefixes? And uh, uh, as already explained by Mr. Rajneesh. An affix is a word that is added at the beginning of a root word or at the ending of a root word. So here, when it is added at the beginning of a root word, it is called a prefix. And when it is added at the end of the root word, it is called a suffix. Let us see some examples related to prefix. What is a prefix and what are the examples related to prefix? Yes. Prefix uh is uh, something, a syllable added at the begin, beginning of the word. You see, even in the word prefix, there is a prefix. What is that word? Pre, 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 pre. is the prefix. Pre is the prefix here. So, something added at the beginning of a root word is called a prefix. For example, we see happy, we know happy. If we add un, a prefix called uh, un, it becomes unhappy, it is, it, which is negation opposite of happy, unhappy, and unimportant, unpleasant, anti so on and so forth. Anti-corruption, you have yes, yes. anti-corruption, yes. antibiotic, true, true. antiseptic, true, with anti, yes. With anti, you yes. can form uh, as many number of words as possible. True. Now, with regards to the other examples, rewrite, writing it again is called yes. as rewrite, Arrange it, arranging something once again is rearranging. Remake, we also have uh, prefixes made with the help of the co, co-writer, 
coincidence, cooperate, co-participate, co-pilot, pre, the word pre that is added to the root word, can you, you can form new words with that. For example, pre-final, pre-independence, and with the help of miss, M-I-S, you can also form words like misunderstand, misinterpret, misspelt, something that is, you know, you, you, you make the spelling of a word wrong and that is called as misspelt. You have in, I N in or I L ill and I am im also added to the root word. For example, we have inevitable, intolerance, indiscipline, illogical, illegal, impossible, imperfect. You can coin as many words as possible, new words, with the help of prefixes. Here yes. we have seen all these examples. Yes. Such a wonderful, you know, way uh, in English we have the speciality of preparing new, coining new words with the help of prefixes. True, true. Right. Now we shall go ahead with the task for prefixes. Now here we have given a prefix and also an example to each prefix. And you are supposed to write two more words uh, with the prefix that has already been given to you that is shown on the screen. For example, post, P-O-S-T, post. The word postpone is given to you as an example. Dis, D-I-S, dis, that is, a, that is the prefix. And something like a word called dishonest. Non, we all of, we all of us know about our freedom movement but the great freedom movement that has been taken upon by uh, Mahatma Gandhiji, non-violence. And you are supposed to write two more prefixes uh, with the prefix that has already been given to you. Now, shall we see what are suffixes, Mr. Rajneesh? Sure, sure, Mr. Krishna. So nice of you. As my friend uh, Krishna was uh, telling us, mentioning, there are hundreds of prefixes in the English language. And these hundreds of prefixes make, uh, add thousands of new words uh, into the English vocabulary. And the prefix, as he already has already mentioned, prefix is something added at the beginning of the root word. And uh, suffix is something, a syllable, which is added at the end of the syllable. For example, ness, N-E-S-S, ness. Happy, happiness. Lazy, laziness. Clever, cleverness. See, you can notice one important uh, um, morphological morphological uh, difference here. Happy becomes ha in happy H, -V H A P P Y. It becomes I. Y becomes I when it is added uh, when ness is added. And similarly, L A Z Y lazy in lazy Y becomes I. So therefore, whenever a Y preceded by a consonant sound, it becomes I. Lazy laziness. And my dear friends, you also. Um, no, make note of this. You cannot add all the suffixes to all the all the words. For example, you can say add full to beauty, and you can say beautiful, but you cannot say uglyful. How can you say uglyful? Ugliness you can say, but uh, at the same time you cannot say beautiness. Beautiful. Beautiness there is no such words uh, word as uh, beautiness. It is only beautiful. And another example, ment, M-E-N-T, ment is a suffix. Um, it uh, is seen in management, encouragement, enjoyment, so on and so forth. Similarly, one more suffix, uh, hood, childhood, motherhood, neighborhood, etc., and etc. Similarly, we have so many other suffixes. Mind you, my dear friends, these are not the only suffixes found in English. There are ever so many suffixes. We are just giving some examples. Um, e R R R O R R. E R is a something, uh, someone who does something. For example, teacher, teacher, conductor, conduct, conductor, like that. Dumb, freedom, kingdom, and word, inward outward, forward, backward, like that. And if you take ism, this is a doctrine, communism um, and existentialism, like that. Fascism. There, fascism, yes, Fas fascism, nihilism, so many isms are. The ism uh, is related to some doctrine, some philosophy, some theory. 
Now, we look at the task for suffixes. Um, as usual, three, three sub affixes are given here, that is suffixes here, suffixes are given. For example, able, readable, full, doubtful, less, less, priceless. You have to write down at least two suffixes using the, the suffix, three, two words each for each suffix mentioned here. Shall we see, uh, Mr. Krishna, what are uh, homophones and homonyms and homographs yes, now? Yes, that, that's quite interesting. But before going into homophones, uh, I would like to make an interesting point with regards to the suffixes that have been already mentioned. You said happy, happiness. True. Enjoy, True. enjoyment. Yes, yes. And what I uh, wanted to specify is that happy is an adjective and when you add a suffix called ness, it yes, becomes a noun. Yes. So, you find a morphological change True. in True. Uh, one part of speech of the word changing into the other parts of speech. Yes, so, this yes. is what is found in suffixes with the usage of suffixes. Yes. The yes. entire structure of the word changes yes, yes. and new words are but, formed. But, but I think it is always not so in the sense, for example, you take boy, boy is a noun and if you add suffix s, yes. uh, which is a plural marker, that also is a noun. Yes, yes. Similarly, similarly mother, go and motherhood. Goes. Go and goes. Mother, motherhood. Yes, true. Mother, mother is, a is a noun and even and motherhood, motherhood is also, also a noun. noun. True. It is not necessary that with the suffixes you... you it it always changes. Yes, yes. But uh, I think that will help the students in uh, understanding what is uh, an adjective, very, what very is a verb and what is a noun and very all these things. Good. Right then. So, Shall we proceed to what are homophones? Now again, homo, homos, the word homos, a Greek derivation, means same, something which is exactly the same. And the word phone means sound. The sound of the word is same. So here we have homophones that have the same kind of pronunciation. Two words are pronounced in the same way, but their spellings are different and meanings too are different. For example, look at this. What do you find in this picture? Yes, most of you are right. It is the tail, T-A-I-L, tail, the tail of a dog, the tail of a cat, the tail of a cow. And in the other picture, you find... It is the novel, A Tale of Two Cities. What is this tale now here? T-A-L-E, tale. That is T-A-I-L, tale. And this is T-A-L-E, tale. Both are pronounced in the same way. But the spellings are different. And the meanings too are, are different. Tale, T-A-L-E, tale, is a long story. Here we have an interesting novel of Charles Dickens, uh, A Tale of Two Cities. A Tale of Two Cities is a very famous novel of Charles Dickens and uh, I advise the students to uh, go through the novel if they find an opportunity to uh, uh, grab a copy of uh, uh, The Tale of Two Cities. We shall now see a few more examples of homophones. For example, meet, M-E-E-T, meet. Rafi wants to meet the principal. I want to meet you all. But there's another word called meat, M-E-A-T, meat. I don't eat meat on Sundays, on Saturdays. I don't eat meat. The flesh of a goat, the flesh of a sheep is called as a meat. The second word that you find, a very interesting word, fair, F-A-I-R, fair, and F-A-R-E, fair. The first fair, F-A-I-R, fair, is a celebration, a religious celebration or something what you call in uh, uh, general our uh, language uh, as a jatra, True. which is uh, just about to arrive in a few days from now. We are going to have this Dasara celebrations, Dasara fairs in all the towns. Science the Batakamba, fairs. Science yes. fairs. We, also, we have also have the yes. science fairs in many of the schools and colleges True. and True. all the places. And the other one is the bus fair, the, the, the price of the tickets of the uh, that uh, that you travel while you tra while you're traveling that is the price of the fare. Now, for the fare, F A I R fare, 
we have got an example here. Anita bought new bangles at the temple fair. And for the fair, there is a slight increase in the bus fare. See how interesting you find these two words. The third set of words that uh, we can give as an example is steel, S-T-E-E-L, steel, and S-T-E-A-L, steel. Steel, as you all know, is the metal that we use in construction of buildings, and uh, that's what we can find the example. The concrete is strengthened with steel rods. The steel, the steel rods are used to, you know, the, to strengthen the uh, building. Whereas the other steel, S-T-E-A-L steel, is stealing something. Employees who steal are dismissed immediately. Stealing is a very bad habit, especially among students. This kind of a habit should not be present in them. So we also have got many other homophones. There are many, many homophones available to us. For example, flower. Most of the learned people also make this mistake of pronouncing these homophones in a wrong way. For example, F-L-O-W-E-R is flower, a rose flower, a lily flower, and F-L-O-U-R, flower, the wheat flower, the wheat flower that we use for making rotis, for making chapatis, the wheat flower or whatever is the flower that we uh, make uh, food items. Another word, another interesting uh, homophone is stationary, S-T-A-T-I-O-N-A-R-Y. Stationary is something motionless, movementless. There is no movement at all. For example, the sofa is stationary. That is, we cannot move the sofa here and there. We cannot move it. The table is stationary, fixed. You cannot move it. Whereas, S-T-A-T-I-O-N-E-R-Y, stationary, is related to the paper items, books, pens, pencils. We always find stationary stores where we purchase books and all these things. And so remember friends, now whenever you find a word called stationary shop with the spelling S-T-A-T-I-O-N-A-R-Y, please go and uh, make a correction with the owner of that shop stating that S-T-A-T-I-O-N-A-R-Y is not the stationary that you mean to say. And you also have another interesting word, break, B-R-E-A-K, to break a glass. For example, if you throw this glass onto the floor, it breaks. And whereas the other one, B-R-A-K-E, B-R-A-K-E is applying the brakes to a vehicle. You, you stop a vehicle by applying the brakes on it. So these are some of the homophones. It's not that what we are giving as examples here are uh, the only homophones available in the language. There are thousands of homophones that we need to regularly practice. Now, shall we go on to the task of homophones with regards to the task of the homophones? The task for homophones. Now, fill in the blanks with appropriate word given in the brackets. We have given a sentence to you. It will be better if the students who are watching this program, watching this telecast, if you write down the words very fastly. You need not write down the entire sentence because that will be a little bit time-consuming kind of thing. For example, the first one is done for you. His son, his son lives in Chennai. The homophones are given in the brackets. Is it S-U-N son or is it S-O-N son? Obviously, the answer is S-O-N son. It cannot be S-U-N son. The, the son does not live in Chennai. S-U-N son does not live in Chennai. Chennai alone. It is everywhere. So, his son lives in Chennai. Similarly, try answering the remaining uh, uh, homophones, the questions related to homophones. The dash is hot today. What is this dash? W-H-E-T-H-E-R or W-E-A-T-H-E-R? Is it W-H-E-T-H-E-R or W-E-A-T-H-E-R? Number two, the boring dash continued for five long years. The boring dash five lo continued for five long years. These days we are watching on the television the soaps, the soaps <laughs> which we generally find uh, in the programs. It goes on for many number of years. What is that called? 
is it c e r e a l or is it s e r i a l which one is the right one and number 3 mary wore a dash blue dress is it n e w new or is it k n e w new and you also have another interesting uh, another uh, homophone here right here in the same sentence blue b l u e and you also have blue the wind blue across the sea so these are homophones very interestingly we have uh, we also have homonyms uh, uh, mr rajneesh will uh, speak about the homonyms yes and the exercise yes, yes. to it yes mr krishna uh, homophones as my dear friend has uh, already explained homophones homo means uh, the same greek from greek uh, greek origin homo and phone is sound while homophone is uh, uh, homophones are the words which have the same pronunciation homonyms we see homos is same and onima is name here uh, names are the words words themselves they have the same spelling the spelling is same the pronunciation is same but meaning is different for example you lo look at this image what is this image your favorite one yes that is a bat b a t bat and how about this 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 also is a bat what is the spelling b a t bat both these words have the same spelling see the spelling is same pronunciation is same and meaning is different these are called homonyms we look at a word a word yes, about yes, a word about uh, Tell me, Mr. Uh, the mammal bat yes. I, i heard it's an it's nocturnal true what, what, what do you right. mean by nocturnal nocturnal mr. Uh, mr krishna yes nocturnal as you know nocturnal is something which moves uh, especially in night time night time is nocturnal okay. the opposite of nocturnal is diurnal diurnal oh. is uh, something moves in daytime we are all diurnals <laughs> and okay. some some, some of crazy us, some of yes, us <laughs> some crazy guys uh, we see they are nocturnal creatures they are uh, usually caught by police in the yes, night time yes yes so right. they don't be nocturnal <laughs> be diurnals and we look at some examples of homonyms rose rose the same pronunciation and same spelling rose is the past tense of rise rise he rose from the chair and rose is a flower 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 rose which is pink usually pink in color and this next one is safe free from any danger safe is an adjective here free from any danger harm or loss the baby is safe in her mother's hands that is the word used here and again safe as a noun is a metal box a strong metal box usually which has a lock on it and where we we save we keep our valuables jewelry money so on and so forth and the other word we see bear bear as a verb it means accept or endure and bear as a noun a heavy animal with thick hair and sharp claws you see in zoos and when if you happen to be in a forest you can see there either and we look at some other examples of homonyms saw past tense of see saw and saw is a, a tool to cut wood and band wrist band the one which is tied on the on your wrist is a wrist band and band of thieves and uh, uh, musical band and again palm palm is this this is palm this one is palm and uh, another palm is the tree a long tree which resembles a coconut tree palm you where you can uh, tap toddy that is a palm tree and shed shed as a verb means uh, shedding tears and shed is a place a cattle shed so like that i have an interesting statement to make about the word saw mr rajini tell me mr krishna tell me tell us please. i saw a saw cutting a saw such a saw i never saw so nice so nice <laughs> see see how interestingly you the, the word play is you can yes. make use of words in such an interesting manner so powerfully you can use that is yes. the power of uh, yes. words mr krishna right and uh, the task now um the sound made by a dog 
is bark and the outer covering of a tree also is a bark. The same spelling, same pronunciation, but different meaning. And the exercise here, the land alongside a river and the place where we deposit money. Both are the same pronunciation and same word, mind you. A piece of land and the story in a novel or movie. The quality of a person's voice and a tint or shade of color. So, in the blanks given for each, uh, each two, the first two blanks, you should fill uh, the same, uh, the homonyms, homonyms, all the three you have to fill in with homonyms. Shall we discuss uh, now, discuss about, uh, sorry, discuss about, you cannot say, <laughs> uh, sorry, I apologize, homophones, homo, homonyms and homographs. What are these homographs, Mr. Krishna? Really, uh, uh, these are something very confusing. Most of the learned people also confuse between what is a homophone, what is a homonym, and what is a homographs. Uh, as we have already uh, discussed, uh, that homophones are words with the same pronunciation but different meaning and different spellings, and homonyms are uh, the words with same pronunciation and same spelling but different meanings, and homographs are the words with the same spelling but the pronunciation and meanings are different, quite interestingly. Again, here homos means the same and graphia is writing. The, uh, the, that, that means to say when you write something, how do you write it? So, it, it indicates the spelling of a word. The spelling is the same, the pronunciation and the meanings are different. For example, you see a picture here, tear. T E A R tear, a lady shedding tears, and you also have a word called tear. Tear, tearing a paper, tearing a paper, or tearing something. So, tear is a noun here which indicates the tears of the eyes, and tear, which is which also has the same spelling, T E A R, but the pronunciation is different and the meaning is also different, which is called as tear, tearing a paper. Now, let us look at a few more homographs. Now, this is B O W used as a noun. When you use B O W as a noun, bow, bow, you call it a bow. You need a bow to shoot an arrow. To shoot an arrow, you need a bow that you know, the um, uh, curved, curved, curved one uh, yes. uh, wooden uh, stick which is used to, you know, uh, uh, make the arrow and uh, shoot the arrow. You find that in the, you know, in the recent movie Bahubali, you find a lot many scenes uh, using the bow and arrow and uh, that is what is a bow. When you, when you refer to the word B-O-W as a verb, it is called bow, 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 the children bow to the audience. The children bow to the audience. It is something, you know, after a performance, you bow to the audience in respect. The second uh, uh, example that we can take is conduct. See, look at the pronunciation. Here is the, you know, the, the significance of stress of words uh, is found here. When it is a disyllabic word, that is conduct, when you find two syllables in a word, and the same word is used as a noun and a verb, when it is used as a noun, the stress should be on the first syllable. Like, for example, conduct. It means behavior. For example, we say conduct certificate. Ravi's conduct is satisfactory. Ravi's conduct is satisfactory. Raju's conduct is not satisfactory. Raju's conduct is good. Whereas, when it is used as a verb, it is conduct. Conduct to organize. We are planning to conduct a meeting today. We are planning to organize a meeting today. In the third example, we look at lead, the word lead as an adjective. For example, Prabhas played the lead role in Bahubali. Quite interestingly, because <laughs> Prabhas is the hero. Yes, yes, but how about Mr. Rana? Rana Dagwati also is a hero in the movie. You know, uh, and the uh, fans of Rana will <laughs> get... A, what a disheartened, they, they get disappointed if you say so. Right, right. So with, Rana with, also with, played with, a lead with role. Due respect to the fans of Rana, 
-hmm. but here the uh, Prabhas is can be considered as the protagonist of the uh, movie. So he plays the lead role, the important role. Whereas led, L E A D, led, used as a noun, which means which most of us know that it is the it is a metal. That statue is made of lead. And we can take the example from the same uh, movie where the statue of Rana, as you said, is uh, uh, made of lead. And we have other words like object. Object used as a noun can mean a thing. And whereas object, object is objection, my lord. We say in uh, the quotes, we have an objection. We have a problem. With that. The other word, polish, polishing the shoe. Whereas Polish, Polish is related to Poland, the country Poland. The other word, another word for this, it is base. I have a base voice. And you also have another word called uh, bass. bass. Bass is a fish. Bass is a kind of fish. Yes. Yes, you're right. And uh, another word that we can think of is digest. Digest is a compilation of articles or uh, laws and all these things. We have a book called, a very famous book called Reader's Digest. Sure. We have a very famous magazine. And digest is digest, digestion of food, to digest the food, so, so on and so forth. We have many uh, homographs. In fact, even the word live that we find here on the screen, L-I-V-E, live. Live is a noun, a show, live show. Whereas L-I-V-E, live, is to survive, to live in a particular place. Yes. Let us take the tasks related to homophones. Now, fill in the blanks again with the same homophone that has been given. A unit of time made up of 60 seconds. We know that it is called as a minute. And something that is extremely small, extremely tiny, very small, minute, that is called as minute. It should be pronounced as minute. We also have other examples to turn repeatedly around something. A natural movement of air. What is that called? To begin again after stopping. What is that called? A short document describing one's education, experience, etc. What is that called? To find or prove to be guilty. A person who has been found guilty. Who is that person? What is that person called? Right. Now that we have completed all the tasks related to the six topics that we have discussed in this uh, program, uh, isn't it time for us to give the answers for the tasks that we have discussed, Mr. Rajneesh? Yes, yes, very much, very much, Mr. Krishna. As uh, we are almost at the fag end of the uh, session, it's high time, it's high time that we gave the answers. I hope all the boys boys and girls have uh, are ready with their answers on their papers. You can verify your answers with, the, with those uh, are given here. The first one, task one on root words, root words, telly, we have given uh, telephone and the other words are telescope, television and my do you mind uh, you my dear friends, these are not the only words that, that are possible. There are ever so many words, uh, telepathy, so many, so many other words, telewise, uh, Telesc uh, telescope yes. is already given and uh, geo, geography, geology, geometry, geocentric, geocentric theory, herb, herb which is related to uh, plants, herbarium and uh, herbal, herbivorous, herbivorous is some uh, an animal which eats uh, herbs is a herbivorous animal, herbivorous and the, the second task, answers for the second task are related to prefixes, post, postpone, post lunch, post metric, post independence, post post mortem, so on and so forth. And an interesting observation, you you know, Mr. Krishna, po, there is a word called postpone, but uh, <laughs> you have also a, an interesting word like prepone. This is a pure Indianism. In fact, there is no such word in uh, actual English, English uh, as prepone. That, that's an Indian coinage. And uh, dis, dishonest, dislike, discontinue, disconnect, if you don't pay uh, the bill on time, your phone will get, get disconnected. And uh, non, non-violence, non-stop, non-vegetarian, non one who is not a vegetarian, 
and non-stop is we usually see buses non-stop buses and uh, the third uh, the third item suffixes able or read readable was given to you and uh, usable commendable and ship ownership friendship fellowship and others so so many ships are there less priceless careless fearless some people say on sundays when you go to chicken market they say <laughs> see i want boneless boneless chicken you cannot say boneless chicken it is chicken without bones you have to say without bones not boneless there can't be chicken without bones uh, boneless chicken and shall mr krishna can, could you explain yes, the yes. other other answers surely surely when it comes to task 4 homophones uh, the sentence that was given is the weather is hot today whether w e a t h e r means the climate whether it is sunny whether it is uh, uh, cool or is it rainy whereas whether w h e t h e r means whether it is possible for you to come or not is it possible for you to come or not we say whether w h e t h e r when it comes to serial the boring serial continued for five long years it is s e r i a l but not c e r e a l serial is you know the pulses what that you have those cereal. are called as cereals yes. wheat both are cereals rice jowar maize yes. all these are cereals both are cereals but c e r e a l are pulses and wheat and all these things whereas cereal s e r i a l is the cereal the cereals that we find on the yes. television a series and uh, when we come to the third example mary wore a new blue dress it is the new blue dress not the old one and k n e w is i know i know him i know her and with regards to the answers of task 5 homonyms the land alongside a river is called as a bank he walked along the bank of the river the place where we deposit money is also called as a bank a piece of land is called as plot a piece of land is called a plot i bought a new plot for constructing a new house the story in a novel or movie is also called as a plot the plot is very interesting the quality of a person's voice is tone you find the tone the quality of the person's voice and whereas a tint of or shade of color is also called as tone right and then now let us see what are the answers for homographs a natural movement of air is called wind we all know this wind is the natural movement of air to turn repeatedly around something is wind and the second one to begin again after stopping is called resume for example the match resumed after the rain stopped and whereas when we see a short document describing one's education experience etc is called as a curriculum vitae it is called resume may it is called resume may and to find or prove to be guilty it is called convict convict, convict. convict as a verb and a person who has been found guilty is convict naim is a convict and yes, yes so these are all the answers to the tasks that have been given uh, can we just uh, uh, you know sum up what we have uh, dealt with mr rajnish and uh, yes, yes, sure, uh, wind sure. up the program sure. wind up the program <laughs> yes yes <laughs> sure mr krishna and my dear friends we have seen t- today we have uh, discussed six uh, things uh, first one is root words second one is uh, prefixes third one is suffixes homophones homonyms and homographs root words you know they are also called stem words which is, which are the basic uh, forms of words prefixes prefixes are something a syllable which is added at the beginning of a uh, word root word suffixes are something which is added after or ending um, ending uh, at the ending of a, a word and homophones are the words which have the same sound and homonyms are which uh, the words which have the same spelling and same pronunciation and homographs are the words which have the same spelling but they do not have they have a different pronunciation and a different meanings so hope you have uh, learned something out of this session and there are so many other ways of improving your vocabulary like uh, you have so many books la- on Uh, word like uh, word power made easy and uh, thesaurus 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 and word origins and their romantic stories and you have also you also have uh, could you tell us uh, something about uh, what are the sites 
which they can make use of. Well, there are many improve. apps related to vocabulary building, uh, Mr. Rajneesh. If you just uh, go to the Google Play Store and uh, type the vocabulary, you can have as many number of uh, sites and uh, applications, nice. Android applications okay. that are available. Right. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, friends. Remember that success is dependent on effort. Happy learning, friends. Thank you so much. Happy thank you learning. So much. Happy learning.